Hello everyone, I'm happy that you're able to join me today for a fun watercolor technique to create backgrounds for a couple of beautiful Simon Says Stamp products, Laird Chickadee and Etched Berry Branch. As usual, if anything grabs your attention, links to the products that I've used to create these cards can be found in the description of this YouTube video or on my blog at bonniecarolee.com. I'm using a new set of paints today by Iul. The set that I have is called Q21 and has 21 different colors. Mica is a mineral that shimmers and shines and it takes watercolor to the next level. To create my backgrounds, I'm borrowing an ink smooshing technique. The paint is being applied to Canson XL watercolor paper that has been cut into squares that are three and a half inches by three and a half inches. The watercolor is applied to the panel in the exact same way as it would be if I were working with inks. Watercolor paint is picked up from the palette and applied to my work surface. I'm working on a glass media mat. I like to apply one color at a time so that I can evenly distribute it across the panel. The panel is dried after each application of color. Heat is applied to both the front and the back of the panel to help minimize warping. Depending on how quickly I was working, the watercolor can dry out, so I kept my sprayer on hand so that I could give it spritz of water as it was needed. Ink smooshing is a quick and easy technique. Using the watercolor instead of the ink has no bearing on the process. It is done exactly the same way. The difference, of course, lies within the materials. We're working on watercolor paper, we're working with watercolors, and so the actual result is quite different than working with inks. The effect is marble or stone-like. I only apply two different paints per panel, but the color variation that I got was quite astounding. I love getting amazing results with little effort. The colors that I've used will be listed in my blog post at bonniecarolee.com. I use watercolor paper to die cut all of the chickadees and the etched berry branches. As it turns out, I made the decision not to paint the berry branches. They could have been cut out of ordinary cardstock, but I didn't know that at the time. A small watercolor brush was used to apply fine spatter to all four panels using watered down gouache. Gouache dries very quickly and in no time at all, I'm able to mount the panels on foam squares that are the same size. I like to pop them under some weight until they dry so that there's good contact between the foam and the paper. The chickadee is made up of several die cuts. I put the first little guy together so that I would have a recipe to follow for the rest. I'm going to be working with just two colors, a dark silver gray and a bronze color. I've popped everything onto a paper towel to keep my area clean, yes, but mainly it's to keep track of all those little tiny die cuts. The paper towel also holds everything in place while I pop the dark silver gray onto the beak, the eye, the chickadee's cap, and the little detail that goes underneath the beak. Chickadees have a white mask and so the first thing I do is I draw in a line so I don't get paint into that area. After a light wash of the silver, I add in the bronze. On the main body of the bird, there are impressions to show where all of those layered elements are going to go. That also helps with the painting. To create some shadow, the bronze is used at the base of where the wing will go and also along the underside of the tail. Silver gray is used to soften up the breast and also the top of the tail. The wing is painted simply with a wash of the silver gray. 
the die cut has some feather impressions and in that area I pop in a little bit of the bronze for some variation. While everything is set aside to dry before I can put those layers together, I'm going to work on my sentiments. I'm going to use two dies from Simon Says Stamp, Script Hello and Big Scripty Hugs. I've used them to die cut both white cardstock and sheet foam. The die cut in the sheet foam has been left in its background with just the centers of the letters removed. This will help me to easily stack the cardstock one on top of it. The die cut in the foam backing leaves an impression making it very easy to line up the cardstock one to it. A craft pick and the openings in the center of the letters make it very easy to do some final adjustments. I find it best to set them aside and let them dry completely before the excess foam is removed. It doesn't take long, maybe 10 minutes, but it does ensure that that cardstock die cut is not going to slip out of position. These sentiments are going to be sitting on a white background, so they definitely need some dimension so that they stand out. These cards are A2 size, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. A panel the same size as the card base has been embossed using Tim Holtz Snowfall Speckles. The foam backed watercolor panel is then adhered to the card base. It is positioned so that the borders on the background on both the top and the two sides are roughly the same. Because of the texture on the embossed panel, it is important to put some weight on top of the watercolor panel until that glue sets up so it does not slip out of position. Now back to the chickadee. I've used that die for the main body to cut out some foam and now I'm going to stack the cardstock one on top of it. To help position the chickadee's cap on its head, there's a little tiny notch that goes above the eye. Next, the dark detail that goes below the beak is adhered. The outline impression of the wing on the main body helps to get that lined up easily. A little dot of glue for the bird's eye and beak and then I use my jewel picker to deal with those itty bitty die cuts. I am absolutely in love with this chickadee. The chickadees dry underneath the weight of an acrylic block. After some consideration, I decided to leave the etched berry branch white. I thought it would really enhance that wintry feel. I want a little bit of dimension, so I'm going to put some foam squares at the base of each of the leaves. Liquid adhesive is applied just to the stem of the branch. That will create some variation in the dimension, really accentuating those leaves. I don't push down on the leaves with their foam squares. That gives me a little bit of time to do some arranging. The chickadee is tucked in slightly behind one of the leaves in the lower corner as it is adhered to the panel. Using a craft pick helps to easily remove the excess foam from the sentiments. They are adhered below the watercolor panel. Confetti or sequins are adhered to the berries to help them stand out. The colors chosen for this detail pick up one of the colors from each of the backgrounds. The chickadee's eye was accentuated with black nouveau drops but just the tiniest of dots. I did take some time to practice before I took it to my just about completed cards. All of the embellishments were finished off with nouveau crystal drops morning dew. I know, I do this all the time, I just can't even stop myself. I should mention that whenever I use Nouveau Drops, I do set them aside to dry overnight. And the time is worth it because the confetti looks amazing. I hope you enjoyed this video, creating simple mica watercolor backgrounds for some gorgeous die cuts by Simon Says Stamp. 
I love the pretty details found on Etched Berry Branch, and Laird Chickadee has moved up to the top of my favorites list. Beautiful combination for these wintry cards. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I appreciate your visit.